Today, in my continued conversation with Dr. Chris Jenkins, we are going to speak about career paths in biosafety and in ethics and the boards, committees, and departments that help with this very important aspect of clinical research. Really a wealth of information, and I personally learned a lot about different career paths in these fields. So I hope you learn a lot. Please consider asking questions in the comments, and we will uh, all engage together to answer them. So my, because I grew up in the clinical research site world, my primary interaction is with the IRB. Uh, so one of the things I loved about it is that people who maybe wanted to be in clinical research but didn't want to necessarily see patients or they got relocated because of a spouse and so they were no longer near a clinical research site, they were able to do some things remotely back in, you know, now a lot of us do that. But it, there's this ability to be administrative in clinical research. And I think people forget that a little bit. So my experience is that in the IRB, you need even less of a focus. There's even less of a focus on having a, a, a bench science degree, biology, virology, whatever. Uh, what characteristics would you look for in like a for someone to be at an IRB in sort of an entry level, intermediate level? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what we've done, there's a couple of pathways we've done. So one is we hire folks into kind of a uh, administrative um, assistant type of role into our organization where some of it is just getting familiar with the, the paperwork, the types of uh, trials that come through. And so we kind of have that broken into sort of a pre-board, you know, study comes in the door. What is it all that makes it a full application that then can be reviewed by the board? That's doesn't necessarily require uh, 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 a scientific degree. It's more we teach folks how to do that. Then um, once they get familiar with the science, they're like, wow, this is really cool stuff. And now I want to dive into the regulatory. Then we can put them on a pathway of training them internally, or they can go through school to get a certified IRB professional certi um, accreditation through an organization called Priminar, P-R-I-M, ampersand R. And they can uh, uh, become what we call an IRB analyst or someone who will actually make the determinations on risk benefit and then present those to the the full board, which is usually composed of the, the MDs, JDs, PhDs that specialize in whatever specialty that study is um, for their final review. And so that's that's kind of how we do that. Right. I've learned a lot from you today. Thank you so much, Chris. So I have a question I'm asking everyone. So what's exciting or amazing about working in clinical research? Yeah, so for me, um, since I, I had a background that was, that taught me about, you know, all pharmaceuticals, I learned, I got, I was a volunteer in clinical research. Um, I, I got uh, experience in sort of the regulatory biosafety, and then I had experience selling science. So I kind of had this sort of melting pot of a bunch of different backgrounds that sort of led to, to this specific moment. Uh, where then I led, uh, uh, formed an organization to service in this industry. Um, I now have seven children that are 11 and under. One of them has a rare disease condition called X-linked ichthyopathy, which is a thickening of the skin. Um, and, you know, for, for me, the, uh, the specialty area that I focus in is called gene and cell therapy. And so I feel like I get a front row seat to the latest and greatest in cutting edge research. Having a child that has a, a genetic condition and rare disease condition, you know, you experience all the ups and downs of clinical or uh, uh, medical treatments and hopes and fears for, for your children. And you would hope that everyone uh, that's treating anybody in cancer or, or, or rare disease or infectious disease has sort of the same same uh, uh, attitude towards it, and this industry really does. And so I think for me, the most exciting aspect is the people that you get to work with. There's people always have a story of why they got into the space, and it's usually something really personal. And the second is the the type of science and uh, uh, research that's being conducted. I mean, these, this is genetically modified viruses or cells or mRNA that's you know pushing back on pandemics or treating you know, curing cancers or, or allowing children who had a death sentence at age two with spinal muscular atrophy to be playing on playgrounds at age five. And so these are pretty amazing therapeutics to you know have a tiny slice of the approval process, and it's a big circle that composes all clinical research. But the slice I get is I get a front row seat to all of it because all of this research has to go through an IRB and IBC. And so, uh, or for gene and cell therapy through an IBC as well, but all research through an IRB. 
And that front row seat's really fascinating. And I think is one of the biggest reasons we get people when they come into this space, they don't generally leave because they get such a broad, it's never boring on the science that gets in front of them. Um, whereas I think sometimes in certain, you know, on the site side or certain types of, of pathways in clinical research, you can kind of get stuck doing one particular thing. And I think the IRB is as attractive as a regulatory option because you see, you could, you, you, one protocol to the next, you could go from a, a phase three cancer trial to a phase one dermatology study first in human to, you know, a COVID study on the next one. Like your day could it just go in 20 different directions. And I think that's what makes it fun. Awesome. I so agree. That is fun. All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for your time. 